Welcome to our lecture on the introduction to the endocrine system. This presentation shall give an introduction to the endocrine system. In endocrinology, we are also going to enumerate the different endocrine glands in animals, the general functions of the endocrine system, and the interrelationship between the nervous system and the endocrine system. The endocrine system consists of many ductless glands which secrete hormones directly into the bloodstream. Again, because the endocrine system are ductless, the hormones that they secrete are directly released into the bloodstream and travel to elsewhere in the body to target organs upon which they act. These hormones affect processes like metabolism, sex drive, and others. The main product of the endocrine system, particularly the endocrine glands, are the hormones. Hormones are a specific chemical messenger molecule that are synthesized and secreted by an endocrine gland or a group of specialized cells. When we are going to compare the endocrine system with that of the nervous system, the nervous system is considered to be a wired control system of the body whereas the endocrine system is the wireless control system of the body. So we have two major types of glands in the body. We have the endocrine and the exocrine glands. So when we are going to compare the two, this is the exocrine gland and this is the endocrine gland. So other types of glands in the body, such as the salivary and the sweat glands of ducts, for carrying the secretions to the points or locations of action. So these type of glands, the salivary and the sweat glands, are considered to be exocrine glands because they have ducts, as shown in this figure, whereby the secretions or the chemical secretions are being released to the surface. Whereas for the endocrine glands, the secretions of the endocrine cells or the endocrine gland itself are directly you know, being released into the blood circulation. So as you can see here, we have here the papillaries whereby the hormones now coming from the endocrine cells are being dumped now directly into the blood. So what is endocrinology? Endocrinology is a science dealing with ductless or endocrine glands. The word endocrine comes from the Greek word endo meaning within and krinin meaning separate. Endocrinology is also defined as the study of the adjustments of homeostatic and other activities accomplished by chemical messengers. The major chemical messengers that we refer to here are the hormones. These are the major endocrine glands in animals. We have the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the thyroid and the parathyroid. We also have the adrenal gland the kidney, the ovary, we also have the placenta, and the testes in males. Aside from this, we also have the thymus, the pineal gland, the heart, as well as the GI tract. The slides to follow will enumerate the different endocrine glands in animals, its location and description, the major hormones that it produces or it secretes, and the chemical class of these particular hormones. We'll start with the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is considered to be a part of the brain. It is an endocrine gland that acts as the main control center for the autonomic nervous system. Its main function is to re-establish the homeostasis and coordinates the endocrine system. It is considered to be a master gland because it secretes hormones that control other endocrine glands in the body. The hypothalamus is considered as the most essential part of the endocrine system because first, it serves as a link between the endocrine and the nervous system and secondly, the hypothalamus secrete hormones that simulate or suppress the release of hormones in the pituitary gland. And these hormones are referred to as 
the releasing and the inhibiting hormones respectively. The hormones that are produced and secreted by the hypothalamus include the following. First, we have the growth hormone releasing hormone or the GHRH. We also have the thyrotropine releasing hormone or the TRH, the corticotropine releasing hormone or the CRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone or the GNRH, growth hormone inhibiting hormone or the somatostatin, and we also have the prolactin inhibiting factor or the PIF. In terms of its chemical class, the hypothalamic hormones are considered to be peptide hormones. The next uh, endocrine gland that we are going to discuss is the pituitary gland. The other name of pituitary gland is hypophysis. The pituitary gland has two main parts or lobes, the anterior lobe or the anterior pituitary and the posterior lobe or the posterior pituitary. The other name of anterior pituitary is adenohypophysis and the, new, uh, the posterior pituitary is neurohypophysis. So this diagram shows the anatomy now of the hypothalamus. We also have here the posterior pituitary or the hypophysis. So again, there are two major lobes of the pituitary gland. We have the anterior lobe and the posterior lobe, the adenohypophysis and the neurohypophysis. So in terms of its uh, location, now again, they are located in the cella touristica, now at the base of the brain. So we'll start with the anterior pituitary. These are the hormones that are being secreted by the anterior pituitary. First is the somatotropin, SDH, or the growth hormone. We also have the prolactin, thyroid stimulating hormone, PSH, adrenocorticotropic hormone, or the ACTH, follicle stimulating hormone, or the FSH, and the luteinizing hormone, LH. In terms of its chemical class, so these are classified as polypeptide or protein hormones. The next is the posterior pituitary or the neurohypophysis. So the posterior pituitary has a neurological origin. So unlike the anterior pituitary, the posterior pituitary does not synthesize any hormones but releases two hormones which are synthesized in the hypothalamus. The two hormones that are being secreted by the posterior pituitary are the oxytocin and the vasopressin or the ADH antidiuretic hormone. In terms of their chemical class, so this is classified as peptide hormones. The next endocrine gland is the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland that is located on either side of the first and you know, the second tracheal rings in the neck. The hormones that are secreted by the thyroid gland include the thyroxine or the T4, triiodothyronine or the T3, and calcitonin. In terms of their chemical class, so this is classified as a modified amino acid or amino acid derived hormones. The next endocrine gland is the parathyroid gland. The parathyroid gland is located on the back of the thyroid gland. It is responsible for the production of the parathyroid hormone or the PTH. So this is classified as a polypeptide hormone. So we also have the pancreas. So the regions of the pancreas that contain its endocrine or hormone producing cells are known as the islets of Langerhans or the pancreatic islets. The endocrine pancreas or the islets of Langerhans are responsible for the production of insulin, glucagon, somatostatin, and the pancreatic polypeptide. These are classified as protein hormones. The next is the Adrenal gland. 
So the adrenal gland is located like a cap at the cranial border of the kidney as shown in the figure. The adrenal gland is responsible for the production of the adrenal steroids. So the adrenal steroids include the mineralocorticoids, the glucocorticoids, and the androgens. It is also responsible for the production of the stress hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are classified as amine hormones. We also have the ovaries. The ovary is considered to be the primary reproductive organs of a female. It is responsible for the production of steroid hormones, including estrogen and progesterone, and also protein hormones, including inhibin, relaxin, activin, polystatin, oxytocin, and others. The diagram shows the cross-section of the ovary showing the different developmental stages of the follicle as well as the development of the corpus luteum. The testes is considered to be the male reproductive organ that produces spermatozoa. It is located in the scrotum outside the abdominal cavity in most mammals and within the abdominal cavity in birds. The testis is responsible for the production of the steroid hormone testosterone as well as inhibin which is considered to be a, a protein hormone. So take note that inhibin now aside from being produced in the testis particularly you now by the Sertoli cells in the testis can also be produced in the ovary via the granulosa cells. We also have the thymus. So the thymus is located between the lobes of the lungs in the upper chest cavity. So in terms of its endocrine function, so it produces the uh, hormone thymosine, which is considered to be a polypeptide hormone. We also have the pineal gland. The pineal gland is a small pine cone shaped structure located deep in the center of the brain. It is responsible for the production of melatonin, which is an amine hormone. The heart is also responsible for the production of the atrial natriuretic peptide, which is considered to be a polypeptide hormone. The kidney is responsible for the production of erythropoietin, which is a polypeptide hormone. We also have the gastrointestinal tract. The gastrointestinal tract you know, is considered to be the largest endocrine organ in the body and the endocrine cells within it are referred to collectively as the enteric endocrine system. Three of the best studied enteric hormones are we have gastrin, secretin, and the 60K or the cholecystokinin. Gastrin is secreted from the stomach and plays an important role in control of gastric acid secretion. We also have the secretin. So secretin is a hormone secreted from the small intestinal epithelial cells, simulating the secretion of the bicarbonate-rich fluid from the pancreas and the liver. And the cholecystokinin is a small intestinal hormone that stimulates secretion of the pancreatic enzyme as well as the bile. In terms of its chemical class, so these are polypeptide hormones. This diagram shows the spatiotemporal expression of the enteroendocrine peptide hormones. For example, the G cells in the stomach is responsible for the production of gastrin, the P cells for leptin. The D cells in the small intestine is responsible for the production of the hormone somatostatin, and the S cells, again from the small intestine, is responsible for the production of secretin. We also have the placenta. The placenta is a temporary endocrine gland located within the uterus during gestation. It produces the following hormones. So we have the progesterone, estrogen, human chorionic gonadotropin, pregnant mare serum gonadotropin, relaxin, the placenta lactogen. 
In terms of its chemical class, progesterone and estrogen are classified as steroid hormones, HCG and PMSG as glycoprotein hormones, and veloxine and placenta lactogen as polypeptide hormones. The photograph shows the bovine placenta with 125 days of gestation. The CNG, the CG refers to the pregnant uterine horn, and the CNG, the non-pregnant ones. This diagram shows the interconnection between the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, and the target organs in avian species. So we have here uh, some releasing and inhibiting hormones now coming from the hypothalamus. And we also have here the tropic hormones coming from the anterior pituitary or the adenohypothesis. These hormones will, act up, will be acting upon on the target organs. Um, take note that instead of oxytocin and uh, vasopressin, we have the AVT or the arginine vasotocin and the mesotocin in birds. We are also going to discuss the general functions of the endocrine system. The endocrine system is responsible for the maintenance of homeostasis, control of chemicals and water balance in the body, control of growth and metabolism, control of the embryonic development and preparation for nursing, nursing a newborn, influence sexual behavior, stimulate growth and maturation of the genitalia, feedback to the nervous system, regulating red cell population and inducing adaptive changes to stress. The slides to follow will enumerate the interrelationship between the endocrine and the nervous systems. The nervous system regulates the activities of the muscles and glands in the body via electrical impulses transported through neurons. Meanwhile, the endocrine system regulates the body's metabolic activity via hormones that are transported in the blood. Reflexes of the nervous system are more specific because nerves regulate specific target cells. Meanwhile, for the endocrine system, hormones can control multiple organs and systems. For the nervous system, it uses both electrical or action potentials and chemical or neurotransmitter signals. For the endocrine system, it uses only chemical signals or hormones. Neural control is fast and its effects are short-lived. Hormonal control is comparatively slower. Generally, its effects are prolonged. The stimulus intensity in the nervous system is represented by the frequency and amplitude of action potentials. For the endocrine system, the stimulus intensity is determined by the amount and duration of the hormones released.